Are you a graduate student wanting to write an academic paper but don't know where to start? You're not alone. So in today's video, I'm going to teach you a simple framework called Docs, design, organization, content, and style to help you break down and imitate the genre conventions of any academic piece of writing. So let's get started. To begin, a genre is a specific type of writing in a field or given situation that serves a specific purpose. Think research papers, lab reports, press releases, even emails and text messages are their own genres. And when writing in new genres, we want to look at four things. First, we have D for design, or how the piece of writing looks. This can include fonts, colors, images, charts, lists, bullet points, graphs, headings, bolding, italics, etc. Anything visual. Next is O for organization or order. For example, in a classic research paper, sometimes called an IMROD, you have an introduction, your methods, results, and discussion. But in an ethnographic paper, you might have an introduction followed by a group description, methods, data analysis, bibliography, and an appendix. Or in an email, you'll have the subject line, a greeting, the body, and your closing. Then we have C for content or the information that is included in each section. For example, you might include background information or history, or definitions of key terms, or an analysis of the literature, or a description of a group of people, or procedures and processes. So for content, just think about what information is in each section. And lastly, we have S for style, which includes language and formality. And in an academic piece of writing, we are going to be professional and academic or more formal. And some stylistic or language choices we can make include vocabulary in your discipline, also known as jargon, grammar like verb tenses and active or passive voice, the inclusion of references and citations, and the use of personal pronouns, for example, using I or we. Now let's take a look at a sample research paper from Psychological and Brain Sciences as an example. Starting with design, you can see that the title, authors, headings, and subheadings are all listed in bold. You can also see that diagrams and charts are used to present models and data. So it can be helpful to analyze model papers in your own field and see how authors use visual elements in their own writing. Next is organization. And here we see the structure or order of our sample research paper. First, it begins with an abstract or a summary of the research purpose and their findings. Then section one is the introduction. Second is methods and materials. Third is results. Four is discussion five conclusions, followed by acknowledgments or special people they want to thank, and references or citations. Now notice in sections two, three, and four, which tend to be the longer sections, there are also subsections, highlighting specific, more detailed topics within the larger section. For example, in section two, methods and materials, subsection 2.1 is focusing just on the participants. Now, depending on your field and the type of writing you are doing, the organization might change a little bit. So again, it's really important to collect models of the type of writing you are doing and analyze them so you can mimic their genre conventions. And next is content or the information that fills each section. For example, introductions typically feature background information, a literature analysis, recognizing a gap in the research and the purpose for the study. While the methods and materials section discusses how you conducted your study, including participants, processes, procedures, and materials used. Now again, every discipline differs a little bit. For example, some fields might have participants, whereas others just have materials. So again, it's really important to reference sample papers and make sure your writing aligns with your discipline's expectations. And the last genre convention is looking at style and language. And one aspect of style is using jargon or specific terms in your field. Remember to always put yourself in the position of your reader and consider the knowledge that they already have when making these stylistic choices. Depending on your audience, you might have to define specific terms if the audience is unfamiliar with your field. Or you can choose to use these terms without defining them because you know your audience, other researchers, is already familiar with them. Now another language feature to analyze is grammar. 
Here is a really interesting chart from this book titled Academic Writing for Graduate Students by John Swales and Christine Feek. This book is amazing for graduate level writing and I highly recommend it. I'll put a link to it in the description below. But anyways, these authors analyzed research papers and documented specific language features and how often these features occurred in each section of the research paper. For example, they noticed that the simple present tense is often used in introductions. Because introductions often discuss the current state of the field, what is known, and report other sources, which requires the simple present. One example of this is seen in our psychology and brain studies research paper, which says, these studies suggest that both WM volumetric and diffusion properties are predominantly altered. Now, I'm not a brain scientist, so I don't understand all of that, but I do see the simple present used to report the current studies. When it says, these studies suggest, or facts from the discipline, diffusion properties are predominantly altered. So just one example of the simple present being used in an introduction. And then in the methods sections, we actually see that the simple past and passive voice are often used here because this section explains how the study was conducted, which was in the past. For example, from our research paper, it says, mid-luteal sessions were scheduled based on both average cycle length and ovulation testing data. Here we see the use of the simple past and the passive voice. The sessions were scheduled by the researchers. Oftentimes in methods sections, instead of using the researchers or we as the subject, we use the passive voice to omit ourselves or remove ourselves from how the study was conducted. Now, keep in mind that these are just general patterns of language and not strict rules. Notice that the authors rank the use of language as high, low, and variable. Low indicates that you can still use that verb tense or language feature. It is just not as common as others that are ranked as high. And also we see the descriptor variable, which means it might vary from sample paper to sample paper or author to author, or depending on your discipline. This is why it's important to analyze model papers in your discipline for the type of writing that you're doing and use that as a guide. There is no one size fits all approach to writing. So what to do if you're writing a research paper or a new academic genre for the very first time? I recommend collecting five to 10 model papers of that specific type of writing and analyzing them using the docs framework to start. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you learned something new. If you did, make sure you like this video and subscribe to my channel so you can keep improving your academic writing with me. I'll see you next time. Bye.